Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm going to be wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of June. If you're new to my wrap ups, the way that I do these is I start by talking about all of my reading stats for the month. I'm a stats nerd, I'm into it. If you're not into it, you can feel free to skip forward to the actual books, but I find it interesting to keep track of what I'm doing so I can also know if I'm hitting my goals or not. So I'm gonna talk about my stats and then I will get into talking about all the books that I read in the month of June, starting with my DNFs or books that I did not finish, my lowest rated books, moving up to my highest rated books. A couple of things to note before we dive into this. One is that uh, quite a few of these books I did talk about in depth in my mid-month wrap up, which I will link up above. So for those books that I talked about there, I will just be showing you the book and the star rating, not going into any great detail. If you wanna hear more in-depth thoughts on those books, I'm going to direct you to that earlier video. One other thing is that for those of you who have been following me for a while, you probably know that for the last six months or so, I have been reading books to judge for the Vivian Award, which is a romance book award. All of those books I can't talk about until they announce the winner, so I've been vlogging them, and I know like I've had a lot of people say they're very anxious for the vlog. It's gonna be interesting, so I promise uh, once they announce the winner, which is supposed to be July 31st, that video will be going up, so you can expect it probably August 1st or 2nd, probably August 1st. It is done. I I just need to add one clip responding and reacting to the winner. So once they announce, you will be getting that vlog. But all of that to say, four of the books that I read this month were for that contest, and so I can't talk specifically about them. Um, so if things don't entirely match up in terms of star ratings and numbers of books, that's why. Okay, that said, let's go ahead and dive into my stats for the month. I have to say, June was honestly a pretty fantastic reading month. I read a lot of books that I loved, like almost a third of the books that I read got four and a half, five or six stars, which is pretty awesome. And I did read quite a lot of books, not quite as many as last month, which I am totally fine with. Last month was like... <laughs> bizarrely a lot. Um, and I also read a ton in the first half of the month, whereas the second half, it, like a lot of the books I was reading were just a little slower, which is totally cool. So in June, I read a total of 32 books for 11,634 pages. That page count does include my audiobooks, and that averages out to 389 pages a day, which is actually kind of great because I've had a few months, including last month, where my average page count has been closer to like 400 or more per day and I prefer it to be a little bit lower than that so this is good for me. This month I DNF'd three books which is a little bit more than usual for me but I, I was just kind of in this mood where I was like if I'm not caring about this or not into it I don't really want to be reading it so we'll get into that. Five of the books that I read this month were published by indie authors. One of them was a reread and 22 of them were either ARCs, advanced reader copies, or books sent to me for review. Um, so only 10 of the books that I read were books that I was just picking up on my own. It was very heavily books for review, which isn't shocking because I had a ton of things I did need to review, including all the NetGalley things I'd been requesting, and it shows. This month I did not read any translated fiction and I read one graphic novel. I mentioned audiobooks and this month I listened to 12 of them. I should clarify that there were 12 books where I just listened on audio. There were a couple of other books where I listened to the audiobook alongside reading the physical book where I did like a blended read and was mostly reading physically or like reading physically while listening alongside, um, but 12 books where I was entirely or primarily listening to the audiobook. Six of those audiobooks were what I termed shelf, which means they were books that had physical copies of on my TBR shelf. I got them off my TBR via audio. And in terms of where those audiobooks were coming from this month, four of them were from my library. One of them was from Audible. One of them was an influencer review copy from Libro FM. I love Libro FM. You can always check them out down below. There is a link. If you're an audiobook listener, they're a great service. You get a monthly credit you can use towards any audiobook of your choice. And then some of the proceeds go to support your local indie bookstores, which I think is is fantastic. Then I had four audio review copies from NetGalley, a lot, a lot this month, two audio review copies from the Penguin Random House Volumes app, and one that I listened to from Script. Moving on, let's talk about the age breakdown of the books that I read. Probably unsurprisingly, the bulk of what I was reading was focused on an adult audience. 20 of the books that I read this month were targeted at an adult audience, 11 of them were targeted at a YA audience, and one of them was targeted at a middle grade audience. 
ones. In terms of when the books that I was reading were published, most of them were pretty modern. The earliest published book that I read this month was 1995. Nine of the books that I read were published prior to 2020. Four of them were published in 2020 and 19 of them were published in 2021. So a lot of frontlist titles, a lot of new releases. In terms of diversity stats, it's interesting and I guess appropriate given that June is Pride Month, but 41% of the books that I read this month were written by queer authors. I mean, I'm not mad about it. Typically, I'm trying to make it about 25% of the books that I read being by members of the LGBTQ plus community, but for Pride Month, it was 41%. On the other hand, 53% of the books that I read this month were written by white authors, and only 47% of the books that I read were written by Black, Indigenous, or Person of Color authors. I'm typically aiming to hit around 50%, so it's a little bit lower than that. Part of it is probably because I was reading a lot of books by queer white authors, but also queer people of color authors. A lot, a lot of queer books this month, which is great. And 25% of the books that I read this month were written by black authors with kind of a smattering of other. And part of the reason that I track my stats and talk about them every month in terms of this is that one of my goals and a value that I have is to read from authors from diverse backgrounds, partly because I want to support authors who have traditionally not been a big part of publishing, but also just to read from other experiences than my own. It's something that I think is really valuable and important in my reading. So tracking it and watching my stats every month helps me to stay accountable to myself and to the goals that I've set for myself and so that's part of why I talk about it here. Looking at genre this month I read a lot of romance it was my top read genre I read a total of 13 books in romance and in terms of subgenres eight of those are contemporary romance two of them were speculative romance and three of them were historical romance I also read a lot of fantasy so ten of the books that I read were fantasy uh, like more than half of my reading was just fantasy and romance. But I also read two sci-fi books, two horror, two nonfiction, one mystery, one poetry, and one thriller. One other thing I might mention is it's really, really hot in New York. We're having a big heat wave, so you might be able to hear the air conditioner in the background. You probably can hear it in the background. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with the audio too much, but this is where we are today. Next, let's take a look at star breakdowns. As I said, it was a mostly a really strong reading month. This month I did not give out any one star ratings. I had one book that got one and a half stars, one book got two stars, one book got two and a half stars, five books got three stars, one book got three and a half stars, eight books got four stars, four books got four and a half stars, seven books got five stars, and four books this month got six stars. And in my personal rating scale, a six star read is what I give to a favorite of the year or a favorite of all time. And this month I had four of them. I think there's only been one other month this year that I also had four. That's definitely on the higher end, which which is great. I read a lot of books that I loved. Lastly, let's take a look at some of the goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year. Um, I have made a teeny bit of progress in one of these categories you know, I'm gonna do the best that I can. Let's see how this goes. We're halfway through the year. I have read four out of the eight classics that I set for myself to read, which isn't bad. I'm like halfway through that goal. I've read five of the nine sci-fi fantasy books that I set for myself to read, which again, not terrible. However, of the books in specific series that I wanted to complete this year, I've only read four out of 15. So we have some catching up to do. We'll see how it goes. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to talking about all of the books that I read this month. We are going to start with my DNFs, which is books that I chose not to finish. And one thing that I want to say about DNFs, and I think this is particularly true this month, is that when I DNF a book, it doesn't necessarily mean that I think it's a bad book. It might just mean that it was not for me or not something that I found interesting or enjoyable to read. And actually, I would say that for all three of my DNFs this month, they are books that I think they're is an audience for I they, they just weren't my cup of tea and so I try to write reviews for my DNF so that people who would be into them would be able to find them. Um, so one of my DNFs I did talk about in my mid-month wrap-up. That book is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. So if you want to hear more about that check out that video. I also DNF Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This I think is just not the book for me. I, I it's just, Definitely. Like I have a lot of friends who love it. It was not what I was hoping for from it. When I heard this pitched, 
it was a sapphic relationship with two women who kind of got drunk and got married in Las Vegas and then had to deal with the repercussions. And so I was thinking, okay, that sounds like fun. It could be like a rom-com type thing. And that's sort of what I was expecting. And that's definitely not what this book is. This book is deep into like millennial angst <laughs> and millennial angst of a sort that I just don't relate to. And that's okay. Like I, I have a lot of friends who have loved this book and really related to it, but it's just not my experience. I am an older millennial, but like I got married at 24. I had my first kid at 27. So the main character is 30, single, doesn't know what she wants to do with her life and has lots of big feelings about things that I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I just, I, this is not, not my thing. So, uh, yeah, this was a book that was just really not for me. I gave it quite a while. I think I read like 25% of it. And I was like, yeah, I just can't like, okay. Um, yeah, I read like the first 70 pages. Okay, so what finally, <laughs> what finally pushed me over the edge into DNFing this is she starts texting her wife because they live in different places the one that she like drunkenly got married to and like these text messages I was like oh no oh no like I just I can't if this was in a YA book it would have been fine but like in an adult fiction novel I was like this is not not my deal um so like I'll give you a brief example of one of the text messages Good night, Yuki Yamamoto who tells stories like they were crafted within her spun with magic and sea salt now, you might hear that and think, that's so beautiful. I love it. I want to read it. And if so, then you should totally read this book because you will probably love it. But if you hear that and you're like, what? <laughs> then don't read Honey Girl. Um, so yeah, th there's just not my cup of tea. Okay. The other book that I DNF'd was Curses by Lish McBride. This was one that I had an e-arc of from NetGalley and I read about 35% of it. This, again, like not a bad book, just not what I was expecting. And, you know, part of this might have been on me that maybe I should have read more in more detail the description that they give. But this was pitched to me as a gender bent retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which I was like, cool, that sounds really interesting. The cover, as you can see, kind of give gave me this vibe that this was going to be like a legit Beauty and the Beast retelling, have kind of those slightly dark vibes to them. And I was like, yeah, I can get behind that. That is not what this book is. So this is a very loose retelling of Beauty and the Beast that is gender flipped, where the Beast character is the girl who gets cursed because she refuses an arranged marriage. So like there is that element of it but this is like a very wacky silly over the top retelling of it that doesn't follow most of the same plot beats like the beginning of it is similar which is why when I first started reading it I was like oh this is really interesting she's getting cursed and then the hero is the son of a con woman like this could be cool but then it just went in like completely different directions. It just wasn't what I was hoping for. I think if this is what you were looking for, if it's your sense of humor, if you want something that's like a wacky, very loose retelling of it, and you can just go with the silliness of it, you might really enjoy it. It unfortunately was not what I was hoping for and not what I was looking for. Not a bad book, just not one that I really wanted to read, at least at this point in my life. I kind of wish that the cover was a better reflection of what the book is like because I think the cover is a little bit misleading as is the the base thing of like a gender flip Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's like yeah kind of but not totally. So just an FYI if that sounds good to you you might enjoy it. There are some like kind of funny things like the main character goes to a support group for other people who've been cursed by fairies and you know in her beast form she's dealing with trying to wear like dresses and gloves and it's it's that kind of thing where the hero instead of being trapped in the castle where she has to fall in love with him is trying to match make for her and help her find somebody to break the curse by like getting an arranged marriage that her mother would approve of it's just very different those were my dnfs <laughs> moving on let's talk about the books that i have finished and can tell you about. This month I gave one book two and a half stars and that was Love and Color Mythical Tales from Around the World retold by Bolu Babalola. Uh, I rounded this up to three on Goodreads because I think a lot of times if you actually rate something two stars people think that like you hated it and I didn't 
hate this. It was just okay. And that's kind of for me what a two and a half star read is. I hoped I would really love this. I like the idea of retelling mythology and retelling these love stories. And she does that. And some of them are really good. Some of them are really interesting. Some of them really didn't work for me. And I think in general, part of the issue is that there are just too many of them. I think this might have been better if she had tackled fewer stories and expanded them. I think there were just too many stories and a lot of them ended up feeling underdeveloped. I like the idea here. I like the project of this. I like a lot of the stuff she talks about in her author's note at the end of trying to find ways to put a more modern or feminist spin on fairy tales that come from these very patriarchal, misogynist, you know, cultures and backgrounds. And I thought that was really cool. I liked some of the representation here of like body diversity and centering Black people. There was a lot that I liked about this or, or liked in theory, but the stories themselves were were fine. Like some of them I liked decently well, some of them I wasn't really a fan of. And so for me, unfortunately, this collection was just okay. But this month I had quite a few books that got three stars and one of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap up and also in a live show for the Blades and Bodice Rippers book club. That is Deal with the Devil by Kit Roca. The live show for this was on Amanda from the Naughty Librarians channel if you want to check it out. And I talk about this in my mid-month wrap up if you want to hear more. I also gave three stars to Out of Character by Annabeth Albert. This is an audiobook that I had for review from NetGalley. It's a very nerdy male male romance that's like childhood friends to not friends to lovers. And the characters are fairly young. They're like college age, so early 20s. And this was fine. It was cute. Um, I, I don't know, like, I think I just wanted more character development from one of our main characters. He just always felt kind of bland and I never really felt his emotion in things and he didn't have as much of a growth arc. But I liked the nerdiness. I thought the relationship was cute. I don't know that I got to the end of the book and believed that they would be together forever. But I was like, this is a great like early relationship to learn from kind of thing. So it was fine. Um, but nothing super memorable for me. So I gave it three stars. I also gave three stars to The Viscount Made Me Do It by Diana Quincy. This is a historical romance that I had for review from NetGalley. And um, I like I really waffled over what to rate this because the things that I like about it, I like a lot and it made me want to rate it higher, but ultimately I kind of couldn't. What I love about this is the representation that it's bringing to historical romance because we need that and I want to see more of it. I think it's so cool to finally start to see a few authors bringing color into history because it was like London in the 1800s was a melting pot because of colonization. It was very diverse um, and traditionally historical romance has been predominantly white and that's just been kind of wiped out of it. So I appreciate that there are authors finally doing some of this work. Diana Quincy is of Arab descent and her heroine is also of Arab descent in this book and works as a bone setter, which is really interesting. She sets bones, but it was seen as like not legitimate medicine at the time. So she's wonderful. So I love the representation. I loved the heroine as a character. I thought she was this really interesting, strong, smart woman. The hero was fine. The romance was fine. Um, I, you know, I talk more about this in my Goodreads review and my Goodreads is linked down below. So if you want to hear more details on my thoughts on this, check that out down below. Um, but yeah, overall, this wasn't a bad book. And I really love a lot of what it's trying to do. I have heard that the first book in the series is better. People seem to have enjoyed it a lot more. So I'm curious to check that out. But if you're interested, I, I like that this exists. I ended up giving it three stars. I would read more from Diana Quincy again in the future. And lastly, I gave three stars to Star Eater by Kirsten Hall. Okay, so I love the idea of this book. I have very complicated feelings about it because there are things that I really, really like. And then I have some questions of why certain choices were made. So this book has been pitched as like cannibal nuns, which, yep, 
totally totally what it is i don't know if you'll call this like sci-fi or it's like a sci-fi fantasy blend it feels kind of dystopian but with fantastical elements to it and our main character elfreda is a sister she was born into this it's something that is genetically passed down this ability to use magic but the way that you get that power is through consuming people and let me tell you I knew going in that that was going to be in this book and I was still <laughs> like still kind of taken aback by the specifics of what was included here and how it was all done but it, like she goes there man <laughs> she really goes there this book gets quite dark it's very interesting it's very very interesting because it's this kind of dystopian culture that is in some ways matriarchal but the women are very involved in political machinations and backstabbing and as much as Alfreda has power because she was born with this magical ability her life is also very constrained her choices are very constrained she's forced to try to have a child because due to the fact that this power is passed on genetically women are required to give birth like they don't have a choice about that there's a whole ritualistic thing around it but what complicates things even more is that when sisters sleep with men they infect them with this disease that basically turns them into kind of like zombie vampire werewolf hybrids it's kind of like something like that but it's this really awful disease and so not shockingly most of these men don't want to sleep with the sisters so what they do is they take the worst criminals and mind control them to force them to do it. So the sister has no choice, the men have no choice, it's pretty horrific and we have a scene of, of that. So um, this book is very very interesting, like the issues it's dealing with are fascinating. I really loved a lot of the storytelling. I did have like one quibble with it where with how dark this book gets, how dark everything gets. Um, the ending was too hopeful, in my opinion. Now, I've seen some readers who were like, I would have been mad if the ending wasn't hopeful, which I get, but at least for me, I'm like, look, if you're gonna go there with this, like, really go there, like, you can't just have, like, a hopeful ending. You need to at least have something that's, like, slightly creepy or bittersweet or something so i didn't love the ending of the book i'm not going to be specific about what it is it was it was definitely interesting the world is really really interesting that slightly would have brought it down to maybe like a four star for me but here's the thing and i i just like if this book had been published 10 years ago i would have given this a pass I, I probably wouldn't have paid a whole lot of attention to it but the fact that this book was published in 2021 it was released in Pride Month, and it is a queer book because most of the main characters are bisexual, which is great. I love the bisexual representation. We don't get enough of it. There's so much biphobia and bi erasure. I love to see that on page here. Um, but look, 2021, it's a queer book. It's being published in Pride Month, and uh, you're using a gender essentialist magic system. Like, the, the, the disease and the magic are tied to your gender at birth. There apparently are no trans people and no non-binary people in this world. Or if they are, it is never addressed. And look, like, it would not be that hard to have, like, a few lines in there that address, like, what that might look like. <laughs> what about trans people what about non-binary people like it wouldn't be a hard fix but the fact that like it's a queer book it was published in pride month and that's just completely erased from the narrative like really didn't sit right with me um and so i did lower my rating to a three star so this is why i have complicated feelings about this book i um I would be very curious to hear other people's perspective on it. Yeah, I, I but it just it rubbed me the wrong way. And once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. So there were a lot of things that I loved about it. Not a perfect book. I do think if this is something that sounds interesting to you, I wouldn't necessarily say don't read it. I just wish we could do better, you know? Like I wish we could pay more attention to the way that we are representing people. It, you know, anyway, like some sensitivity readers might have picked up on that possibly. 
I don't know. I don't know what the publishing process for this book was, but worth considering. Tell me if you've read this, what you thought about it, if you would want to read it. It, it was a wild ride. Okay, it was a wild ride. This month I gave one book three and a half stars and I did talk about it in my mid-month wrap-up. That book is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. If you want to hear my thoughts on that, check out my mid-month wrap-up. Then eight books got four stars. We had a lot of four star reads this month and uh, actually a lot of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Five of these I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Res Dogs by Joseph Bruchak, The Burning God by R.F. Kuang, The Queer Principles of Kit Webb by Kat Sebastian, and This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. If you want to hear more details on those, check out my mid-month wrap-up. I also gave four stars to Sanctified by Maggie Blackbird. This was the pick for the Indigenous Romance Read Along this month, and I have a live show, which I will link up above if you want to see it, where we talk more in detail about this book, but I really enjoyed it. It's quite steamy, but also deals with a lot of real issues. It's kind of almost like a Romeo and Juliet type situation, not because they're young, but because their families are feuding and the hero and heroine are both heading up the election campaigns for people on opposing sides who are running to be the new chief of um, their people. So I really liked this. I'm not going to talk a lot about it here because I did talk about it quite a bit in the live show, but I definitely enjoyed this. I would read more from this author. I would read more in the series. And if you're looking for indigenous romance that is like quite steamy, but also deals with real issues, like the fact that the heroine is a recovering addict. And uh, I, I just really liked the way that it handled a lot of stuff. So four stars to Sanctified. I also gave four stars to Hard Reboot by Django Wexler. This is a little novella that was sent to me for review from Tor.com. And it was a lot of fun. It's a sci-fi novella with like giant mech robots battling in an arena. There's actually not that many robot battles. There's a couple, but if that's like mostly what you're there for, you may not quite get what you're looking for, although there is some of that, but it's really interesting. There's also a sapphic romance. It's like an opposites attract thing. One of our heroines is a low ranking academic visiting Earth for a research trip, and the other heroine tries to con her out of money, and she's a pilot for these mech robots, and they end up having to work together in these dangerous circumstances. It was just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Worth checking out if that sounds up your alley. My final four star read was the last book that I read in June, actually. This is Small Favors by Erin Craig. I, in case you're wondering, have not read Erin Craig's first book. She wrote A House of Salt and Sorrows, although I will say after reading this book I'm more inclined to want to pick it up because I really enjoyed this. This was on my list of really anticipated releases partly because I just loved the cover and partly because I knew it was a creepy kind of YA horror novel and it totally is and I was pretty into it. Not a perfect book, like some issues with some pacing, the way some things wrapped up near the end, like I wasn't fully, fully satisfied with, but I had a really good time with this. If you're looking for a quiet, slow burn horror novel that doesn't get super scary, like it has very, very creepy moments in it, but it takes its time and a lot of it is about interpersonal relationships and dynamics, this is one to check out. It follows a young woman who has grown up in a very isolated small town, um, kind of like a frontier town, so it's set in maybe a version of historical America is, is the vibes you get, although you don't get a ton of specifics, but it's the small isolated town with weird mythologies surrounding uh, its creation and a list of rules that the founders set in place for everybody to follow. But things start to get weird. It begins with deformed animals getting born, with crops rotting before they can get harvested, strangers coming into town, and then there starts to be animosity and interpersonal dynamics, and our heroine is just trying to take care of her family, her younger sisters and her twin brother, and help them survive through the winter and through the year. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I really enjoyed it. I do think later on in the book, we get some information that explains things a little too early. I think it decreased the, the rising tension. Like you really want tension to keep rising a little bit longer than it did. And I think 
like you were able to figure things out a little too early. But overall, really enjoyed this. If that's something you're looking for, I would recommend giving it a try. Four stars for small favors. This was an e-arc that I had from Neck Alley. Next, I gave four books four and a half stars, and two of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier, and The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. If you want to hear more, check out my mid-month wrap-up. I also gave four and a half stars to Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sambury. So I really enjoyed this. I think it's a really strong debut. And I'm also really excited because Lizelle will be a guest on my podcast, I think this week as the video, this video is coming out. And it was really fun to get to sit down and talk with her because I had so many questions coming out of this and I love what she's doing here. It did take me a little while to get into, which is why it wasn't like a full five star read for me. It can like the early part is a little bit slow to get in but once I was in I hit a point I actually like halfway through the book I hit a point where I like could not put it down <laughs> I, just, I stayed up till like 1 30 in the morning to finish this book because I really wanted to know what was going to happen there are so many things that I loved about this I'm not going to get into all of it here because we do talk in the podcast episode I also get into a lot of it in my Goodreads review but I think it's a very strong debut and what's cool about it is it's a genre blend it's set in near future Toronto so there are some sci-fi elements to it and our heroine is a black girl from a witch family so there's magical elements to it and I loved the way she blended the sci-fi and fantasy elements. I thought it was really cool and really interesting. There's also moments that it edges almost into horror, so I'm not shocked that Lizelle is also writing a horror novel, which I'm very excited for. Yeah, this was really cool. There's a lot about family and coming of age and complex relationships and making difficult choices. It's got a ton of great representation, not only in terms of having black characters who are centered, but also queer characters. The love interest is trans, there are other queer side characters, and the way that that was handled I thought was great. I know Lizelle got sensitivity readers for all of those things, and it shows, like you, you can, I think, kind of tell. So yeah, I think this is a very strong debut. I'm excited to see what else we got from Lizelle, and I would recommend it. You know, note that I do know Lizelle somewhat, and we are kind of friends, like we met in person once, and I follow her and have followed her journey, but you know I always try to be as honest as possible with my reviews, and I think this is a fantastic debut, so go check it out. And the final book that I gave four and a half stars to this month was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Last Hour series, and honestly, I had such a good time reading this. I think if I was just going based on my enjoyment, I probably would give it five stars because I love these characters. I love the world. I was into all of it. But I do think there are moments where things are a little bit slow and you know like if you're not just completely in love with with everything that's already here like the pacing isn't perfect so I did give it four and a half stars but I had such a good time with this and I love that Cassie I know people like get so sad she like will rip people's hearts out but I love that the stakes are high and like the characters go through real stuff this was this was a lot of fun. I'm not going to talk in detail about it but I do think it's a very strong follow-up to Chain of Gold so if you've been liking the series this continues to be great. It is interesting because it's dealing with more hard-hitting issues like one of the characters is an alcoholic and he's pretty young and um, you know that's hard for his friends to know what to do with that. This also has one of my favorite tropes which is a fake marriage and the way that, that that is all happening is just like deliciously angsty and twisty and we're learning more about different characters and it was just great. If you like the series, definitely read it. I love it. Next, let's talk about the books that I gave five stars to this month. There were quite a few of them. I gave seven books five stars and three of them I talked about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are One Week to Claim It All by Adriana Herrera, also, I will note, for anybody who hasn't heard me say this, uh, Adriana Herrera and Vanessa Riley came on my podcast to talk about writing diverse historical romance, and it was fantastic. So link is down below, Chapter 3 Podcast, check it out. In that video I also talked about So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Oluo and Winter of the Witch by Katherine Arden. Again, check out my mid-month wrap-up if you want to hear more details about those books. I also gave five stars to Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This was my one reread of the month and I read this for a read-along with Ashley from Bookish Realm and Laura from A Book Circus. I will link up above the live show for this. It was really interesting because Ashley DNF'd it but after discussing it 
I think she's gonna go back and read it and we'll see if she follows along with the series. I don't know if she's gonna continue with us, but Laura liked it pretty well. I loved it. I will say I was surprised at how much it stuck with me so many years later because I read this for the first time a long time ago and as I was reading it it was like really coming back to me and I had a great time with it reading it again I do see that it is slow paced it's a little more dense this is high fantasy and it's older it was published in the 90s so maybe not everybody's favorite thing but I loved it and uh, the illustrations in this edition are just gorgeous. I also gave five stars to Good Girls Don't Make History by Elizabeth Keener. This is a graphic novel that I had an arc of for review from the publisher and I really like it. It's about the history of women's suffrage and the women's suffrage movement and it does a nice job of flashing between modern day girls like talking about voting or waiting to vote or whatever and then going back to the history of it and it's intersectional in the way that it addresses it. It talks about black women, it talks about indigenous people who were not even considered citizens for a long time and what women who were fighting for women's suffrage went through in terms of getting arrested, getting beaten, like all the things that happened. It's really fascinating. I think this is targeted at a YA audience but really anybody could read it. It's a great nonfiction gra graphic novel that is coming out I think like July or August so go check it out. Lastly I gave five stars to Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. I really enjoyed this. This was the book club pick for my Patreon book club and I have read one other thing by Katrina Leno which I had like much more mixed feelings about. Wasn't expecting this book to be what it was but I ended up really loving it. It's kind of fantasy, magical realism. One of our main characters comes from a family of women with magical abilities. They're like witches sort of and they live on this tiny isolated island that is a little odd and it, there's there I knew there was like a sapphic relationship in here where during the summer before she goes off to college she meets a girl who comes to visit the island which is true but that's also not even all of the story or maybe even the primary story a lot of the story is about her relationship with her sister and dealing with things with sexual assault and rape culture it's fascinating and I think handles things really well. I didn't expect it to get as dark as it did, but I I appreciated the commentary it was making and the way that it was handling things. Also, atmosphere in this book is top notch. Really enjoyed it. Uh, and this does make me a little curious to try more from Katrina Leno because I read You Must Not Miss. There was a lot that I loved about it, but I had very mixed feelings about the ending. So. Anyway, we discussed this for quite a while with uh, Patreon Book Club and it was an interesting discussion, but I did give this one five stars and quite enjoyed it. Lastly, let's talk about the books that I gave six stars to. And again, in my personal rating scale, these are books that are a favorite of the year or a favorite of all time, typically, you know, favorite favorite of the year. There are three of them that I can tell you about and two of them I talked about in my mid and then 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 two of them I did talk about in my mid-month wrap-up. Those books are Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamide and The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri, of which I also have a standalone book review because I loved this and I want everybody to go read it. It's very different from her first books. It's so good and it makes me really happy. I see people commenting. I don't I'm not always good at responding to comments right away but I see people commenting that they picked it up because of me and have loved it so I'm like yes 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 yes. I love it. Okay, the final book that got six stars for me this month that I can tell you about is Witch Shadow by Susan Dennard. I probably don't talk about this series enough, but I love the Witchland series. It is technically YA, although honestly, after the first book, it reads much more like crossover into adult high fantasy. There are so many different arcs and character threads and clues to what's going on, and it feels more mature. I wish more people would pick up the series because it's so good. And this is among my favorite books, like this and Sight Witch, which a lot of people don't even read because it's a novella and they don't realize that it's like really crucial to the story. Like you really need to read Sight Witch. But this was great and so many reveals like the number of things you learn in this book oh my goodness I'm not gonna get into it here uh, in my Goodreads review I have a list of like some of the revelations so if you are curious if you're a fan of the series and want to see like so many revelations so many things happening what's wild about this too is that because of publishing 
reasons, Susan had to take what was originally supposed to be two full books and combine them into one book. And so as a result, she kind of starts in the middle. So when I started the book, I was like, wait, what? Did I miss something? What happened? And then you get occasional flashbacks that fill you in on like how you got to where you are when this book starts. And it is a wild ride. Um, anyway, I loved it. I thought this was so good. The character development, the clues, the revelations, the breadcrumbs, the way everything's coming together. I'm so excited for the final book in the series, which is coming out theoretically next year. Uh, yeah, loved it, loved it, loved it. It was great. Okay, those are all of the books that I read in the month of June. It was a really great reading month, and I had quite a number of books that I just adored and had such a good time with. Let's hope we can carry that energy into July. That would be fantastic. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. We're back. The camera overheated and had to take a break and let it cool off. This is what I'm saying. Even with the air conditioner on, it's so hot and the camera will eventually overheat. Anyway, talk to me in the comments down below and for your question of the day, if you are a rereader, tell me about a book that you reread after a long time and really still resonated with it. Like with Assassin's Apprentice, I didn't expect to remember so much of it as I did or love it as much as I did. I mean, I thought I would like it, but yeah, it was a cool experience. So if you've had that kind of an experience with a reread, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.